Good night, honey. Now, get yourself ready. Get that radio turned up, because tonight, live in our spacious studios, a very special guest, ladies and gentlemen, Lionel Cartwright! I had a six transistor when I was a kid Under my pillow I kept it hid When the lights went out and no one could see Over the airwaves the world came to me I'd go through the stations till I found a game I knew how they played by the sounds of their names. The sluggers hit homers, those pitchers threw smoke. And I watched it all on my radio. At the crack of the bat, I knew how far it go. And I watched it all on my radio. I watched it all on my radio. When I was a kid, under my pillow, I kept it hid. When the lights went out, no one could see. Over the airwaves, the world came to me. And I had a seat on the very front row. And I watched it all on my radio. I watched it all on. That was I watched it all on the radio by Lionel Cartwright. Hi, how you doing? All right, Trish, how you doing? Just great. Uh, that was off of your second album. Yeah, that was the second one I did, and that was the title. I watched it all on my radio. Okay, you're true story, by the way. Oh, it is a true story. He had the flashlight under the covers. I had the, the whole nine yards. I had the transistor radio, which is hard. I guess I don't know if kids now even know what a transistor radio is because the boom boxes have taken over, but. Um, yeah, I used to. In fact, I had it strategically placed. I'd hide it under my pillow, and uh, the only thing we didn't have in the in the video was a. Uh, I had an earphone, not headsets, but the little earphone mm -hmm. you stick in your ear, and I'd lay on top of that. So when your mom and dad look in, they they think you're laying there Could, asleep, but you're laying there. Couldn't getting see into it. the tunes. I was <laughs> I was under the blankets reading comic books. <laughs> oh really? That, that was my thing. Yeah. Hey. Um, that'll work. Did you grow up in Wheeling? Near Wheeling. Yeah, right outside of Wheeling, West Virginia, yeah. And always liked country music. That was... I, uh, I remember the first day I, I ever really... Uh, just something inside of me was just turned on. It was like a, a flame came up. 
Uh, I was home one day from grade school, sick actually. Mm, yeah. And I listened to the, I had that little radio and I listened to a show called The Wheeling Jamboree, which was on Saturday nights. But as a little kid, you know, I listened mainly to hear the comedians. They had a couple comedians on there I'd always listen to. And never really paid attention to the music. And this was when I, I guess I was about 10 years old. And, uh, I was home one day and I put that in, laying there in bed and listened to it. And I, I forget who it was, either Charlie Pride or Merle Haggard, I believe. And I'm telling you, I, I can't explain it, but it was just uh, something just clicked. And I just, from then on, just absolutely loved it, you know. And all kinds of music, too, not just country. But the, I, I did have a real love of country stuff um, as a kid. And, it, you know, I, I did grow up in West Virginia, which is a predominantly a rural kind of a uh, state. Wheeling's kind of a small city, actually. Um, but people around here would say, yeah, very small city. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I just loved it. And uh, a lot of kids, my point was, a lot of people did not like country music my age. I mean, you needless to say, in fifth when, grade. When country wasn't cool. That's right? it. So was I. Well, did you ever think when you first turned on that radio and listened to Wheel and Jamboree that you would someday be there? Boy, no, I didn't. Not at all. I, I just listened to it because I because I loved it and uh, it's funny though that Christmas my brother wanted a guitar for Christmas and they ended up getting him a little four string mini well, was a baritone U because uh, technically what it was but uh, I he just didn't take to it and I picked that thing up and got the the book it was a chord book that came with it and uh, I said oh gee well that only takes one one finger well that's oh wow and, and it, you know it just was real natural kind of thing I didn't have parents that said well we want you to be in music business or something it just was a real passion that I had for it from just you know like I said as a very young age well you played at the jamboree while you were going to school yeah that to college yeah what got you through school and then uh, when what happened what made you decide to head for Nashville what? well I uh I went through college there in Wheeling and uh, worked at the Jamboree, which was, uh, for folks that don't know about the Wheeling Jamboree, it's the next to oldest live country show next to the Grand Ole Opry, right. which was uh, really a great experience. Uh, I mean, I played a lot of other places on my own during that time, too, but, but that experience, uh, first of all, just to play live on the radio mm -hmm. is an incredible experience to, to be able to do at such a young age. I was 17, I think, when I got that job, and I was there. Uh, through age 22 and it just was incredible you know because there's a pressure that comes when that red light comes on mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> uh, it really does sharpen you I think to a degree to get used to pressure um, I'll never forget one night I kicked off a song in the wrong key my boss was standing right behind me the girl starts singing on the air she's in the wrong key she looked back at me with a look that would just burn through steel you know uh, but I had some great experiences there too. I got to be a, uh, a uh, how should I, a temporary buckaroo one night with Buck Owens. It was an incredible thrill, you know, because I was such a Buck Owens fan. Oh, yeah. And uh, I got to play piano with the buckaroos and him one night to, to back up Buck Owens. It was just like, I, I'll never forget calling my mom and dad, turn on the radio, turn on the radio. Right. Okay. And when you went to Nashville, did you, were you writing at that time? You know, I, yeah, I was all through, you know, back to my late teens, I started writing, but it, I never showed it to anybody because I didn't, you know, I didn't have much confidence in it. I think I had more confidence in myself as maybe a player and, and somewhat of a singer, you know. But uh, in 1980, uh, 1983 and 84, I got to work in Knoxville, Tennessee. I was doing some work over there and uh, got to work with Boudlow and Felice Bryant who are just yeah. incredible Super. writers, written classics from Bye Bye Love, you know, Wake Up Little Susie, All I Have to Do is Dream, Love Hurts, mm -hmm. on and on and on. It's really quite disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they, I had never really worked with people who were just great songwriters. Mm -hmm. I'd been around a lot of singers, a lot of players, but uh, they were incredibly encouraging to me. And at that point, and I just caught a fire from them about writing, I thought, man, I gotta be, I got, okay, I'm gonna get out of the closet. Yes, I want to be a writer artist. So that's uh, when it really hit full tilt that I was really gonna, gonna commit myself to that. 
and uh, gosh, it's been an incredible growing process ever since. Well, the, I was going to say the writing has really bloomed because you have seven out of ten on, on chasing, chasing the sun. The sun. Yeah. There it is, chasing the sun. <laughs> and uh, now, do you have a lot of influence as to what went on that album? Uh, well, that's been a real uh, growing thing, you know. I mean, uh, there's a, uh, when I got my record deal, I was uh, I had a pretty good idea of who I wanted to be. And I think the record label had an idea of who they thought I was going to be, and it's not always been the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so it's kind of it's been a give and take thing for me of uh, trying to please myself and trying to please the people you're working with, and I. More and more, I've realized you've got to please yourself, especially in a creative thing. You know, you've got to be happy mm -hmm. with what you're doing because, you know, you go out here and travel thousands, literally thousands of miles, probably tens of thousands of miles a year. And uh, I, I have to feel just passionate and that my heart's in the music. Uh, otherwise, you go out here and you play it every night. And if your heart's not in it, boy, it doesn't take too long for it to... Uh, you know, to get old. But uh, fortunately, I have been able to do stuff. The label was really uh, pretty open to me and letting me do what I wanted to do. So. That's great. Well, do you have trouble finding songs by other writers that suit you? Um, it's it it involves a lot of searching. Yeah. And uh, because I don't know, I'm kind of an odd bird. I, I'm kind of country, but to kind of have some pop things in there too, and some. You know, I when I grew up, I listened to everybody from Buck Owens and Merle Haggard to James Taylor and Elton John. <laughs> so Goodness. all that's kind of in there. And uh, right now, the traditional thing is very big, which I am a total fan of. I mean... Uh, this is a very traditional album. Really? I, you I, think so? Yeah, I think it is. I really... I'll be done. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I did. I liked um, Smack... Smack dab, dab in the middle yeah. of love, yeah. And I'm your, I'm, I'm your man. I'm your man. Those were the two. I'll be done. That I really liked on that album. Well, we're gonna take a look at another one of your videos, and then I think I'm gonna ask you if we can't visit with you again for next week. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Do it again. Be glad to. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the show, and this is "Say It Isn't True," Lionel Cartwright. Last night I overheard What I'm praying were just careless words People saying that they've seen you with another Friends have been avoiding me Trying hard to hide their sympathy but I can see right through their cover I can't believe this is something you could do I can't be free till I hear it straight from you Say it's not true Say it's not true That is just a friend Tell me this is not the end Tell me that it's all A misunderstanding 
understanding Things aren't always as they seem Wake me from this bad, bad dream Tell me that it isn't Say it's not true. 